Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Tonight's game is brought to you by TCGPlayer.com, where you can find all of your cards online while still supporting local game stores, Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks, and through Patreon, where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. Our Mox Pearl patron, Marcus, is joining us for tonight's game. Patrons are allowed to play whatever they want when they play with us, so we get some very unique decks. Marcus is continuing this tradition and bringing his take on a CEDH Myel the Anima. If you wanted to be on an episode, consider signing up for our Mox Pearl tier on Patreon. You get all kinds of Patreon benefits and you get to be in a video with us. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Zack, Paladin Kess, Dissident Mage. This is a mid-range deck that has a multitude of lines such as Consultation, Underworld Breach, and Storm. Zack's opening hand contains a Mystical Tutor, Cabal Ritual, Ancient Tomb, Steam Fence, Watery Grave, Island, and a Scalding Tarn. Next, we have Ryan, piloting the partner pair of Silas Wren, Seeker Adept, and Rograk, Son of Rogah. This is a proactive deck that is all about casting Ad Nauseam as fast as possible. This strategy is commonly referred to as Turbo Ad Nauseam. Ryan's opening hand contains an Infernal Plunge, Mystical Tutor, Scalding Tarn, Volcanic Island, Wooded Foothills, Gemstone Caverns, and his London Mulligan is a Red Elemental Blast. After that we have Marcus, piloting Myel the Anima. This is a mid-range stompy deck that looks to overrun opponents before they can establish their board presence by cheating huge threats into play. Marcus's opening hand contains a Mana Crypt, Scroll Rack, Regal Behemoth, Gamble, Exploration, Temple Garden, and a Wayward Swordtooth. Finally, we have Adam, piloting Riel, the Everwise. This is a mid-range deck that utilizes lots of discard synergies to generate card advantage and then swing out with a pumped up Riel. Adam's opening hand contains a Codex Shredder, Careful Study, Red Elemental Blast, Firestorm, Two Islands, and a Tolarian Winds. Without further ado, let's begin the sarcastic, sassy, sneaky, stylish slaughter of someone. Zack wins the magic card ripping challenge and gets to start us off. But Ryan has a pre-game action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Wooded Foothills. Zack draws a card for turn and plays a Scalding Tarn. He passes the turn. Ryan draws a card for turn and also plays a Scalding Tarn. He casts his commander, Rograk, son of Rogah. Ryan ships a turn to Marcus. Marcus draws a card for turn and plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts a Mana Crypt. He follows it up with a Scroll Rack. He casts an Exploration. He plays his second land for turn, which is a Reflecting Pool. Marcus, with a blazing fast turn one, passes to Adam. Adam draws a card for turn and plays an island. He casts a Codex Shredder. In response, Marcus activates Scroll Rack. He exiles three cards, draws three, and then rearranges his exiled cards. Adam passes while receiving threats from Ryan about his Codex Shredder. Zack draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He passes to Ryan. At the end of Zack's turn, Ryan cracks a Scalding Tarn, pays one life, and then fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. Ryan draws and continues to copy Zack by playing a Volcanic Island. Ryan looks at his hand of top deck tutors, stares at Codex Shredder, and then curses Adam's name. Adam celebrates accordingly. Ryan scornfully passes the turn. During his upkeep, Marcus loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Dryad Arbor. He casts a Wayward Sword Tooth. Marcus ends the turn. At the end of Marcus's turn, Adam activates Codex Shredder, milling Marcus for one. Adam draws and casts Careful Study. He draws two and discards two. He plays a Scalding Tarn and passes to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Polluted Delta. Zack passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and somehow plays a Polluted Delta as well. He casts an Aether Spellbomb. He decides to send a message about Codex Shredder. He moves the combat and attacks Adam with Rograk for zero commander damage. Adam marks it and Ryan ends the turn. During his upkeep, Marcus loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and casts Life's Legacy, sacrificing Wayward Swordtooth as an additional cost. Marcus draws five cards. He plays an Arid Mesa. He plays a Savannah. Marcus cracks his Arid Mesa, pays one life, and fetches up a Stomping Ground onto the battlefield untapped, paying two life. He casts his commander, Myel the Anima. Marcus passes. At the end of Marcus's turn, Adam cracks a Scalding Tarn, pays one life, and fetches up a Steam Vents onto the battlefield tapped. He activates Codex Shredder, milling Ryan for one. Adam draws and plays a Bloodstained Mire. He passes. At the end of Adam's turn, Zack cracks his Scalding Tarn and pays one life. In response, Adam cracks his Bloodstained Mire, pays one life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. Zack then fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield from his Scalding Tarn. Zack cracks his Polluted Delta, pays one life, and fetches up an Underground Sea onto the battlefield. The turn then passes to Zack. Zack draws and plays a Morphic Pool. He casts his Commander, Cass, Dissident Mage. He ends the turn. At the end of Zack's turn, Ryan cracks his Polluted Delta, pays one life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts a Mystical Tutor. 
Ryan fetches up an ad nauseum onto the top of his library. Adam then activates Codex Shredder, attempting to mill Ryan's ad nauseum. In response, Ryan cracks his Aether Spell Bomb and draws a card. With Codex Shredder still in the stack, Marcus activates Scroll Rack, exiling five cards, drawing five cards, and then rearranging his exiled cards. Ryan then mills one card, and the turn passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and casts an Infernal Plunge, sacrificing Rograk as an additional cost. He adds three red mana, and then casts Ad Nauseum. Unfortunately for the table, Ryan timed this perfectly, and Ad Nauseum resolves. Ryan reveals a Demonic Tutor, City of Traitors, Ristic Study, Diabolic Intent, Morphic Pool, Arid Mesa, Cabal Ritual, Mental Misstep, Grinding Station, Spell Pierce, Training Center, Jessica's Will, Time Twister, Dispel, Exotic Orchard, Watery Grave, Final Fortune, Force of Will, City of Brass, Fell War Stone, Mana Confluence, and a Peer into the Abyss, deciding to stop there. Getting unlucky with his Peer into the Abyss as the last card, and pretty low on life, Ryan looks on how to move forward. He plays a Training Center. He casts a Final Fortune. In response, Adam casts a Frantic Search. He draws two, discards two, and untaps three lands. Ryan passes the turn to himself. At the end of Ryan's turn, Adam casts Firestorm, discarding two cards and attempting to deal two damage to Zack and Ryan. Ryan responds by casting Force of Will, paying one life and exiling Mental Misstep. In response, Adam casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Force of Will. Unfortunately for Ryan, he's tapped out and has no further resources to get out of this situation. Blast counters Force, and the table rejoices as Firestorm resolves and Zack and Ryan take two damage each. Ryan dies, and the turn passes to Marcus. During his upkeep, Marcus loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Wirewood Lodge. He plays a Plains as a second land for turn. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Earthshaker Giant. He activates Miles' ability, looks at the top five cards of his library, and then puts an Avacyn, Angel of Hope, onto the battlefield, bottoming the rest. Adam and Zack now know that they are in a tough situation, and Marcus passes to Adam. Adam draws and casts his commander, Riel the Everwise. Adam ends his turn. During Zack's upkeep, he casts a Mystical Tutor. He fetches up a Time Twister onto the top of his library. He draws and plays an Ancient Tomb. He taps Ancient Tomb to cast Cabal Ritual. He casts Time Twister. Everyone shuffles their hands and graveyards into their library and draws seven cards. Zack casts Winds of Rebuke, targeting Abyssin. In response, Marcus activates Scroll Rack. He exiles all seven cards in his hand, draws seven, and then rearranges the exiled cards on top of his library. Winds of Rebuke resolves, Avacyn gets bounced to Marcus's hand, and then each player mills two. Zack passes. During his upkeep, Marcus loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He plays a Forbidden Orchard as a second land per turn. He casts a Natural Order, sacrificing Mael as an additional cost. He fetches up a Vorinclex. Voice of Hunger onto the battlefield. He taps Forbidden Orchard, gives Adam a spirit, and recasts Avacyn, Angel of Hope. He activates Scroll Rack. He exiles four, draws four, and then rearranges the exiled cards. Marcus casts a Dragon Lord Dramoka. He passes to Adam. At the end of Marcus's turn, Adam activates Codex Shredder and mills Marcus for one. Adam draws and plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it, pays one life, and fetches up a mountain onto the battlefield. He casts Gilded Drake. It enters, and then exchanges control with Vorinclex. Adam casts an Izzet Signet. He casts a Careful Study. He draws two and discards two. Riel triggers, and Adam draws two more cards. He casts a Lotus Petal. Laughing while doing it, Adam casts Go for Blood, having Vorinclex fight Kess. Vorinclex chomps Kess, killing her, and then Adam moves to combat. He attacks Zack with Riel and the Spirit. Zack takes four, and Adam ends his turn. Zack draws, and then taps his Ancient Tomb to cast Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Dockside enters, and Zack creates seven treasures. He plays a Spire of Industry. He cracks a treasure and casts Reanimate, targeting Green Warden of Marasa in Marcus's graveyard, which is a sentence I was not expecting to say while narrating a CDH game. Reanimate resolves, Zack loses six life, and then returns Green Warden onto the battlefield under his control. Green Warden triggers, and Zack returns Demonic Tutor from his graveyard to his hand. He cracks two more treasures to recast Demonic Tutor. Zack fetches up another card into his hand. Zack cracks two treasures to cast Underworld Breach. Breach resolves, and then Zack exiles three cards from his graveyard to cast Demonic Tutor from his graveyard through Underworld Breach. He fetches up another card from his library into his hand. He casts Brain Freeze with a storm count of six, and then targets himself with each copy. 
Zach mills 18 cards. He exiles 3 cards from his graveyard to cast Mox Diamond, discarding Misty Rainforest. He cracks his last treasure and then exiles 3 cards from his graveyard to cast Grim Monolith. He exiles 3 cards and then casts Grinding Station. He activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Mox Diamond, and then mills himself for 3. He exiles 3 cards to recast Mox Diamond, discarding a Swamp. Grinding Station triggers and Zack untaps it. He activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Grim Monolith, and then milling himself for 3 again. He exiles 3 more cards and recasts Grim Monolith. Grinding Station triggers and Zack untaps it. He floats mana from Grim Monolith and then activates Grinding Station, sacrificing Grim Monolith and then milling himself for an additional 3. Zack exiles 3 cards from his graveyard and casts Soul Ring. Grinding Station triggers and Zack untaps it. Zack presents the loop of exiling 3 cards from his graveyard to recast Soul Ring, which untaps Grinding Station, floating mana with Soul Ring, and then sacrificing it to Grinding Station to mill himself for 3. Each time he does this, he mills 3 cards and nets 1 colorless. He does this until he has 5 colorless. He then presents the same loop but uses Felwar Stone to generate colored mana. Zack mills his entire library. He exiles 3 cards from his graveyard and casts Thassa's Oracle. Oracle enters, and then Zack wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what an awesome game with our patron, Marcus. Congratulations to Zack on his win. He was able to expertly navigate his storm turn and then pulled out the win. One of the strengths of his deck is the overlapping combo pieces and he had them on full display this game. Being able to demonic tutor three times in one turn is a recipe for success. Speaking of that, the most valuable card tonight goes to demonic tutor. There really isn't much to say about this card except for it is one of the most powerful cards in the game. Putting any card from your deck into your hand for two mana is pretty powerful. Zack was able to expertly navigate his final turn and pulled out the win through the use of this card. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. You can help us out by liking, sharing, subscribing, and also supporting us on Patreon. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time. Okay, I'd like to give a Patreon shout out to D Roach, Brad Tobin, Sanguinolency, I hope that's right, Snarps the Cleft, Matt Wingrove, Delph Driz, Josh Kovach, Dante, Baby Jesus, no, no, that's not right, Baby Jeebus, Trey Payne, Rikeko, Baskin, Zods, Noah Saldania, Wyon, Spielrahu, CZ, Taylor Colron, Coran? Coran? Taylor Coran and Nick. Really appreciate it. You guys are the best.